Okay, the recording has started. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ryan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC weekly call. This call is public, open to anyone to participate and contribute. We do ask that you familiarize yourself with the antitrust policy. The antitrust policy notice is currently displayed on screen if you have the screen. There is also a code of conduct that you should be familiar with. And uh, with that done, you're welcome to participate. So we have a fairly light agenda, although I see people at the last minute adding more announcements, so we'll see. But uh, I think we don't have too much on our plate, so maybe we can have a shorter call. I wouldn't mind. Uh, so let's get started with a bunch of announcements. So who wants to get started? Call for mentors and projects. Is men on the call? I don't see men. Um, I mean, that's basically it. Yeah, Those which two bullet items are it. Yeah, but. Anybody wants to talk about it, right? I will. Um, it's basically uh, the fact that the mentorship program is um, getting started now. So the calls open, the emails have been sent out. Um, one of the things that we would really like the um, TSC to consider is reaching out to everyone in your groups for um, submitting the mentorship projects because we're at that point first where we're doing all the different projects and you can sit there and see the program description and the schedule posted. So the first push is for the projects and then later we'll be pushing for the interns themselves and the review of the interns. But this is the time to get a lot of really good stuff done. Um, you know, this is how Dave Hughesby got in the, a lot of the did work done, some of the URSA work done, some of the Explorer work done. So if there's anything that you have that's good, that's a good project for an intern to do, um, to do some additional work that maybe your project needs, this is the time to submit those and start working with men on creating one that's a, a doable chunk of work for an intern. So can I, can I make a request about the, the program and maybe we just take it back to Brian, I don't, I don't see him on, so maybe he's not here, but um, one of the things that, <laughs> I found out sort of recently was that the mentors aren't invited to, or they weren't sort of invited to the global forum, um, you know, where the, the, the mentees were. Um, I'm not saying to pay for it, but I do think that it would be nice if it was made clear that, you know, we want to make sure that the mentors and mentees get to meet each other, because I think in many cases that won't have been the case. Um, just a thought. I like that idea. At least, you know, let them have pre admission to the global forum, maybe not pay for the trip. Right. Or, you know, I, but at least to have, a, I think, you know, in this particular case, it was the, you know, they didn't get a talk accepted. And there was no sort of formal invite that they could show their leadership um, as to why they should go. Um, I, I fixed that, but um, I think it'd be nice if that was part of the program. Again, just it, it can be a paper, you know, nothing more than please do come, right? You know, that you can show your boss. All right. Thank you, Chris. Sounds like a good suggestion. Silona? Um, do you mean for the next thing or? No, I wanted to know. I mean, is that, can you convey that back, please, to the team? Yes. I'm writing it down in the notes right now. All right, very good. Thank you. Any other questions on the mentorship program? Or comments? Otherwise, Silona, you can carry on with the SIG and working group. So um, the announcement that I put in was um, talking about the, uh, the Hyperledger Global Forum that's happening in March. 
and especially to the technical community on the fact that we're doing kiosks for the work groups and the projects. This is kind of a time for um, some of those people that didn't get those talks accepted uh, about their projects or their work groups to be able to have a small lightning talk about it. It's also a time for uh, being able to introduce your project to people. We're also doing um, birds of a feather tables, which is basically a time to uh, be able to lead a discussion um, at a table during lunch. So talking to a lot of different people about what some interesting birds of a feather might be. I want people to think a little bit beyond just like taking a table for their project for every lunchtime, but instead sitting there and thinking of a topic for each day that kind of inspires people to come over and talk to you more about your project. So, um, you know, like for URSA, one of the things we discussed was not just having a table about URSA, but on one day sitting there saying, you know, why you should incorporate URSA, you know, what are the ways to go th through and do it and things of that nature so that you can have um, a little bit more targeted discussions because otherwise it feels like um, it's just a table for the URSA people to hang out with. And instead it's an invitation from the URSA people to the other projects to come and discuss topics with them. So we're doing that. And then the, bit, the last one is um, I, we're in the process of hiring a professional videographer and his team to come in and record videos on Thursday and Friday. He's also going to be doing some B-roll and stuff on Tuesday and Wednesday. But the focus on that is to be doing introduction videos. And so this is a really good time for um, what I want to do is on YouTube, I would like to have a playlist for the greenhouse where basically each of the different projects, each of the different work groups, each of the different SIGs get to come in and record a two to five minute video about who they are and how to get involved. Um, so that we have a bunch of different faces, a bunch of different people saying what makes their thing special um, to encourage people to come and participate. And all of those, the sign up pages are linked off of the wiki page that I attached in the notes. All right, Any thank questions? you. Uh, did, are we still going to have another, like, I remember last year participating in something that's felt like speed dating type of session. That was actually pretty fun to participate in. Uh, yeah, there is, there is one of those. Uh, it's the mentor mentee session uh, at the Global Forum. I think it's like 8 it? o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, is it? Oh, okay, is that the mentor mentee? Yeah, that's 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 our speed dating thing. Okay. <laughs> Not to be confused right, with the summer internship. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Any questions for Sirona? Yeah, one one question. Hi Solana. Um I know we're gonna to chat tomorrow as well, but um two things. One on the on the kiosk, what is the staffing level? Should we be trying to man project kiosks or the kiosks for the whole whole time no no we're only basically having the kiosks being open during the breaks uh because we realize that that's too hard on some of the smaller projects um so you know that was one of the things that we talked about on that is that it's a little bit too difficult to have that so instead that's why we're doing the presentations because it's it's just too much to man booths 24 you know the, the entire event because then you can't attend the sessions and you can't do all of these other different things. It's not, we're not really big enough for that yet. Okay, perfect. Um, my other question on the birds of a feather tables, particularly breaking up the projects, um, uh, and there's a proposal for a, a cross project one. I know Sean is on this call at the moment. He, he's working now on, with a grant uh, on a uh, Solidity compiler um, that compiles to various eWASM targets, and there's various bits of WASM work going on in Burrow. Um, so it might be interesting to have a table that uh, talks about some of these emerging uh, WASM targets that can be run in different chains, um, which would include include Fabric and Sawtooth if, if they've upgraded on Burrow at least. Um, so yeah, if we, we, that's perfect for the BOF tables, Silas. Okay. That's exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for is for that that those types of crossovers and those types of um, kind of a little bit more specific topics that ends up engaging the developers more to come over and say, oh, you're talking specifically about this thing. I really want to know more about it. Um, I also think it helps people know more about the different projects too, when they sit there and say, oh, okay, 
we're having a WASM discussion where, you know, if someone wants to sit there and talk about a particular um, consensus algorithm that they're looking at and things of that nature where they can sit there and, or even talking about specific interoperability between certain projects like um, Explorer or any of those, I think that's exactly the type of thing that I'm looking for. All right, thank you. Anything else? I think or this is your little bitty bit of unconferencing time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, hearing none, let's keep on moving. I think, Dan, you inserted the DCI survey stuff. Yeah, so uh, we mentioned this last week that we've launched the survey. Um, we were planning on sending out a notice to all the mail lists, but there's some obstacles to doing that and some reasons uh, that it would be negative to do that. Uh, so what we're asking instead now is that if you are a uh, chair of a working group or SIG, or you are a maintainer of a project, if you could notify your respective group. Um, I put some example text, so it should be easy to just cut and paste that into an email and send that to your own list, uh, or you could speak to that during your next meeting. Uh, and if I kind of run down the, the list of participants in this meeting, we've of course got pretty good coverage over all of the projects. So, you know, Gary's at the top of the list there. So Gary, if you wouldn't mind sending that onto the, the fabric list. And uh, Ruin, I see you on there. If you wouldn't mind sending that to the sawtooth list. Uh, Bobby, we spoke yesterday. Uh, so I, I won't run down the whole list here, but I think you all know who you are. Uh, and in many cases, there's just one of you from one of the uh, projects or working groups. So if you could just self assign yourself that little task of pushing out that email, that would really help uh, what we're trying to do in, in the DCI working group. All right. Any questions? Are these, are these being collected for something, uh, the purpose? The, this is our main way of measuring the community health at, at this time. So there's demographics in there and feedback about your experiences in engaging in um, development and forums and events. Mm -hmm. What we want to do with that is be able to see where we're weak or identify where we have problems that we were unaware of. Got it. Thank you, man. Dan, I'm, I'm I will I will do this for you because I am I'm impressed in the way you presented this. <laughs> sounded very you sounded like very professional. I, I'm seriously impressed. I was so engaged, I forgot you assigned something to me. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan. Let's keep on moving then. That's it for the announcements. Uh, looking at the quarterly reports, I put back the identity working group because Vipin wasn't on the call last week and I want to give him a chance to say anything, but I see he's not there either. So I don't know if anybody else wants to speak up about the identity working group. I didn't see any further comments or questions on the report. So that's kind of the last chance, but if anybody has anything, now is the time to speak up about the Identity Working Group report. Otherwise, there was also um, a report for, from the Sawtooth project that was published. Thank you for doing that. Um, I looked at it yesterday. I don't think there was anything salient that uh, or to be brought up to the TSE. So unless there is anything anybody wants to bring up now, we'll just leave it at that. So the, the only one thing, and I didn't, I didn't add a comment, I thought about it a couple of times um, and then chose not to, but uh, if you go back a second to the end, I think it showed that there's like 104 commits. you know, for the last quarter, that's not a lot. Yeah, I can go back and double check those numbers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it just, it just seems really, really low. So the previous two, 
I don't know if that's just looking at one repo and not all of them. Yeah, I don't know. I'll double check that that went across all the repos. I do know that. Because it just the... seems like not a whole lot of activity. I know you had a release and so forth, but, uh, you know, it doesn't yeah, seem like a the, lot. So, the, yeah, the, it's probably the Yeah, this is Mark, Dan. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, went through, I went through the different repos. Um, I may not have captured it um, correctly. I know you've run the reports in the past. I might have missed something on that. Um, but, you know, even though it shows even that lower number of commits, we did have some fairly significant ones, um, especially as it kind of indicates near the top rung, uh, the, uh, um, the lib sawtooth and stuff like that. So, um, and then the release. So, I mean, that might be part of it as well. But uh, if you want to double check, Dan, make sure I didn't miss it. I didn't have your, your magic reporting at my fingertips when I did it yesterday. Oh, OK. Yeah, I, I've got a script I can run for that. OK. All right, thank you. Anything else? If not, I guess we can move on. I don't see anything else uh, about the upcoming report so that then uh, highlight that we have a list and uh, online. So please keep an eye on that and see if uh, your project is due for a report. So um, on the discussion topics, I thought you were going to add in the repo. Yeah, so well, I wasn't sure if your response was kind oh, of... Oh, okay. Deep. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> <laughs> but we, 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 I think we, we have a chance that we can appreciate. talk about it. So let, yeah, let's get at it after. after. I'd like it to. Okay, produce. first I wanted to to resume the discussion we had last week yeah. on the replacement of the major releases with promoted releases, and uh, there was quite a bit of discussion. I let it drag on a bit because we didn't have much else on the agenda anyway. And I thought we could maybe make some progress. Uh, at the end of the call, I have to admit, I was a bit confused and started wondering whether even though I had liked the idea initially, whether we were going on the wrong uh, uh, path there. And especially because it seemed to be adding processes where we do not have one today. And, and you know, there was this kind of mismatch between how things have been working where I heard, I mean, we've said like communication when it comes to marketing, um, marketing doesn't ask us permission and I don't expect them they will. And then Dave said, well, for the security audits, I can't afford to wait for the TSC to give this green light. So I always anticipate, I'm glad so far I've been always right. And, but so, you know, I was like, okay, Maybe, maybe that's really the problem is not so much in how we define promoted releases and what comes with it. So these notions and I had, so I updated the, the proposal with a cleaner definition of what a promoted release is based on input from, I think initially Tracy had some input on the TSC channel and then Hot submitted some text as a comment I kind of chewed on this and put uh, together something that is a bit more concise, but is very much in the spirit of what had been discussed. And then the key thing was, you know, in the original proposal, I had suggested we just keep the approval of a promoted release to the TSC, which kind of implies there's a formal process, somebody has a project has to go through, they want a promoted release, they have to come to the TSC, the TSC goes through some review, check that the criteria have been met and then say yes or no. And then I figured, well, maybe we don't need that last part and, and which would be at odd with how things have been working anyway. And so what I propose is now, what I changed the proposal to say basically is to say the list of criteria that we narrated from first major release remain the same and it, but they are ready to be used by the projects to know when they are entitled to a promotion of their release. And then we don't have to have this vetted by the TSC actively through some you know, re review and, and, and explicit approval. 
but that can be left to the team to figure out. And, you know, I think it's in line with how things have been done. And I mean, I haven't heard anybody say this process has been abused. We need to put a, an end to it. And I'm all for a lighter process where possible. So I, have, I got the feeling that maybe that would solve the problem. And so the proposal remains to change major releases to promote release with the added fact, added benefit that, you know, projects can have major releases independently of their status. So they specifically, you know, in incubation, you can have promoted release um, for major releases or not. It could be a minor release that this gets decided to be promoted. And so it kind of untied those two things, which was the main idea initially. And, um, but again, we just don't have an explicit approval from the TSC for promoted release. So that's the fundamentally what, you know, I updated the, the proposal to try and convey. And we can discuss with the, you know, the text that I put in actually conveys that properly or not, but I hope it does. But that's the crux of it. And since I only did that yesterday, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of sick. So I haven't had much time to work on this earlier on. Uh, but so I didn't want to put it as a formal decision to be made now. Although if everybody seems to feel like, hey, okay, this is the right thing to do, I'm happy to have a vote. But otherwise, I just wanted to put it as a discussion item to see if that kind of addresses everybody's pain points or if I miss something that we need to discuss further. So, any reactions? That works for me. So, who's deciding? So, this is so the uh, the hyperledger staff just decides what's a promoted release, essentially. Yes, and the marketing team, and uh, and yes, the staff. I mean, the projects have to request it, of course, right? I mean, that's typically how it's been done. Okay, can we say that in the proposal then, that the projects request it? That the projects request it from the HL staff? Yes, I guess we can add that explicitly if you think that's necessary. Uh, um, to, to me, it's just a little bit confused now because it still reads that we're, we're replacing the term uh, that is a milestone that the TSC decides upon, but then we're getting rid of the TSC decision point. Uh, right, I but I the, think that the, um, you know, we, we do have criteria that you need to go through and do a security audit and, and so forth. And but we're leaving because those are staff functions, the, the scanning and the security report, audit, you know, requests and so forth are all part of this and, and the marketing part is all governed by the staff that we sort of I think we provide that as sort of guidance to Salona and team to make sure that all those things are done. <clears throat> but you know, to Hart's point, I think adding um, you know, an explicit statement that you know, project teams, you know, maintainers or whatever should request of staff for a promoted release. I think that makes sense. So would the TSC still be pro uh, approving the first, <laughs> trying to avoid no. saying these exact terms. No, we, so approve, uh, active. we approve active and incubating. That's right. We Once the project active is active, it, it's assumed. I mean, because and one, you know, part of the discussion that we had, um, you know, back in the day was that a lot of the criteria were overlapping, and then Hart pointed out where they were a little bit inconsistent, which, right, which led to this whole discussion, right? So we, you know, we have some criteria for becoming active, right? Go with it. Once you're there, then you should be doing all the right things, and we don't need that criteria. We just really need the, you know, you got to have a license scan security audit. Uh, um, can I, this is Angelo, can I just have a comment 
to better understand what, especially the last, uh, the last paragraph. So when we say that promoter releases are not limited to major releases anymore, given that we are now changing the meaning of, uh, um, we do, uh, changing the meaning of major release. So major release before was something for Hyperledger. Now, well, it's because what, of what the is now Angela, for Hyperledger? It, yeah, Angela, it's because of the Semver. Technically, the, you know, Semver de defines you know, the, the, the numerology there is if you get a, you know, the first significant digit is a new number, that's a major release. But it could be that you really just had a breaking release. You had to make an API change to fix a bug or whatever. You don't really want to sort of, you know, go to town with marketing and everything else. You just want to make sure that the community of people that are using it realize, oh, there's a breaking change in here potentially. However, there are also circumstances where you use the significant digit really as a marketing tool, right? And that was another part of the discussion where when you get to some sort of milestone and you want to sort of emphasize that, right? You know, that you give it a new number like Windows 3, you know, <laughs> and, uh, or Windows 10, right? But I mean, Windows 7 went, you know, to 10, right? It, it's just a number. Right, it, but it was more. No, 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 Chris, the, 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 this I get. So, okay, just when we, it was what it means, a major release with this one with lower letters. So, first of all, there is a difference between major release with lower letters and major release with capital letters. Uh, just in parsing yeah. the, the sentence, it to no, me sounds okay. Which, which major releases, which concept we are referring to? When we say promoter releases are not limited to major releases, because major releases has an understanding for uh, a hyperledger as it is now, but there's okay. also another understanding of the one that you were describing. Uh, I, I, yeah, let me explain, Angelo. The lower case versus uh, upper case major release. <clears throat> I think at least my initial thought was okay, we're replacing something that is labeled as major release with capitals. Uh, currently, it's, that's the way it's documented. So this gets replaced with promoted releases with capitals. Once you've done that, there's no notion of major release with capitals. And so I just talk about major release with that capitals all the Perfect. No, no, this is, it's clear. It's clear. So the major release with all low letters is exactly the concept that Chris was explaining. So uh, that, that to me is clear. And uh, for me, it's fine, this formulation. And by the way, so the, to clarify on, or add to what Chris was saying, one example, for instance, where you might want to have promoted release on a minor release is uh, in case of a new LTS. So in Fabric, we had 1.4 was LTS. So you could say, hey, Fabric 1.40, and maybe we'll have Fabric 2, I don't know, 0.2 or something like this, going to be a new LTS. Maybe we want to have a promotion about that. And it's not a major release per se. But. So there are cases like this. And part of the goal here is to really untie those two things so that there is more flexibility for projects to decide what gets promoted, what doesn't. But so then back to your point, I don't know if you're satisfied with what Chris said. I mean, I. I no, no, I'm fine. I'm really fine. I'm fine. It's, uh, it's, it's all clear. And the formulation is fine. I, I, I get the full meaning. I want to, just to clarify this point the difference between capital letters and low letters, but it's clear now the difference. Okay. Thank you. And, and Dan, are you okay? Yeah. With that? I'm, well, I'm just weighing in my head whether it's a better use of the TSC to be involved in these milestones or if it's better to stand apart from them yeah sort i mean a I, philosophical I question about what what is the role of of the steering committee i feel like if the steering committee isn't going to be involved in this i kind of wonder why it's part of the project life cycle it feels outside of the true project life cycle right which is Proposal, incubation, active, end of life. Because you can promote releases at any point along that then, right? Because we obviously promote it when it gets accepted into incubation. Uh, we're saying that it can be promoted during incubation when it goes active. Uh, I doubt we'll probably promote it at end of life, but you know. 
Well, okay, so let's contemplate the alternative. If we follow that thought, then the alternative is to just drop this notion altogether and leave it to the staff entirely to figure out the uh, promoted releases. The problem, I think, is we had people felt pretty strongly that this should, because of the resources or the expense associated with this, it should be limited to active projects. I don't know how we capture that desire from the TSC unless we have that formally defined somewhere. I think it's actually uh, sort of in the charter. I'd have to go back and look at the language explicitly, but I think it says something in the charter that um, active projects are the ones that get the, uh, you know, the support. But it, you know, I think, you know, again, we were faced with the um, the explorer team looking for uh, a 1.0 because they didn't feel like you know, as a zero dot something that they were getting the attention that the project possibly deserved in terms of its maturity um, from a technical perspective. And so they wanted to go to 1.0, right? And frankly, if, you know, Brian and, and Emily and Jessica decide that, you know, it'd be a good thing to sort of highlight the fact that there's this project and it could use some love, then that should be okay, right? And, you know, I don't know. That's my thinking. All right. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'm happy to, you know, let everybody think about this till next week, and then we can have a more formal vote. Uh, I don't mean to rush uh, anybody into a decision right. here. I, I just overall think that the technical steering committee should be steering the direction, not doing um, the oversight very very hard governance you know we're a steering yeah. committee let's steer set the direction and let things go I, I kind of like that mark I think what I does that translate to mark though in this case mm -hmm. and I'm trying to interpret what you're just saying I, well, I, we I set some guidelines right we set guidelines, we, set guidelines. we, we, and, we steer you know, the, be... the technical direction of hyperledger and then we have a little so clip in from favor of the Carib proposal? You know, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> is that a statement in support of the proposal? <laughs> That's all Arno wants to know. Is I don't. I don't know. Statement what you agree? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to understand what it, Mark is saying. Seriously, like last week, I don't know what a yes means and what a no means. <laughs> but, no, I, but I think I think <laughs> I don't know. That should, I don't know that. The technical steering committee should be involved in deciding what what gets promoted and what doesn't. I don't see that as our role. Okay. So if the proposal says that, then I'm for the proposal. I mean, same. Nice. I think we right. might Thank have you, a role. Mark. Anybody else? I just think we might have a role in assessing whether a project meets our standards and that's what this milestone would, would you today. feel more comfortable Dan if part of the process aside from requesting the staff to promote a release um, that there would also be notification to the TSC of the intention and it's not a mother may I it's a, um, you know assuming that uh, you know, the staff follows through, we're requesting this to be promoted. And if the TSC members want to sort of say, hey, <laughs> wait a minute, you know, they can do that at their peril. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's the answer. I don't know. Yeah, that, that might be it. All right, guys. So again, the wiki is up. Uh, please feel free to comment. We'll uh, look at it again next week. Unless somebody, you know, raises some major objections or requests for change, I my plan is to put it for vote next week and see what happens. So that's the end of the official agenda. But in preparing for the agenda, <laughs> I mean, yesterday I was I reached out to Chris and said, "So what's up with the repo structure?" And he, 
he kind of made a joke in response, which left me confused as to whether it was ready for prime time or not. But it sounds like Chris would be happy to bring it up now. So yeah, and I Chris, apologize, but I was juggling 15 different things. And so I didn't right. get a chance to look back at uh, our chat. But um, yeah, I mean, I made a proposal um, that I don't, you know, again, I think, you know, I just wanted to sort of raise awareness. I, I you know, send it around the horn and try to get people to see it, but I don't know if they did because there weren't any comments, but um, essentially I'm proposing that we use the tool that Rai um, uh, found uh, at the to-do group that called repo linter that goes through and it checks to see do you have all of the things that the to-do group recommends as best practice for your open source project and it looks at things like do you have a license and is it a valid license and do you have um you know uh contributing guidelines do you have maintainers list and so forth and um and so it does a pretty good job of that there's a couple of things i think it needs to be tweaked like for instance when i ran it against fabric it didn't find the azure pipelines yaml file because it was looking in a different place than where we had it and so we may need to do some little tweaking there and then there is a requirement for a notices file <clears throat> and i think that you know certainly notices is probably something we want to add but even apache doesn't uh, require it um, it's it's strongly recommended but um, uh, that said and there was something else that it was looking for that I think we could uh, oh it was it was looking for the presence of uh, issue and pull request templates which is a good idea but I don't know if it's recommend uh, required but I think that if we could you know sort of net out to my proposal of the things that would be required we could use that and, and the the community architects or the maintainers of projects could run it against their um, tool. They could put it into their CI for that matter to make sure that they have all the things. And, um, and that takes care of that piece of it. And then the, the sort of the possibly the more difficult piece was the code of conduct piece in terms of what is in the code of conduct. And I think right now it's looking for an email um, and uh, <laughs> That was something we have to work through uh, because we were basically pointing to a wiki that has the email, um, at least in, in the Fabric project, but then we have Besu and others that have a slightly different code of conduct. And so I think getting to agreement on what is the code of conduct for hyperledger projects is a separate issue that I think we want to probably keep separate. So. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Um, do you think it's, uh, I, I'd like to, I think, propose that we create a lab that forks the repo linter and then we can make the modifications to the default. Oh, it's actually, uh, it, the modifications are just a configuration file. Yeah, but I don't know, the last time I looked at it, you couldn't specify which configuration file. It was only one configuration file, right? So I'm thinking that if we had a Hyperledger specific a, one. I think there was a flag, but I, I'll, I'll double check. You may be right. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember. It's been a while since I actually played yeah, with it. I'll, I'll, I'll take a, another look. I thought there was a flag that you could specify which one, because there is a default one, and then there's actually another one in there. But So, so I mean, maybe it's worthwhile that just then to create the um, the configuration file if that's the option right and have a hyperledger configuration file that we then uh come to agreement on yeah so i remember seeing a couple of comments from dan i believe who is disputing some or questioning some of the the requirements there yeah there That's, I did mention that. I mean, uh, it's it's currently listed in there and it'll give you an X if you don't have one. I agree. Most of the larger projects probably do want one. Um, but even Apache does not require it. Um, it's recommended. And, you know, when you put something out as a product, then your product team will work with legal to get the right notices and license and everything else, I'm sure. 
that they do. But um, I mean, we can add it. It's a bit of work, though, to put one in there. And I guess you can just put a file in there and say, yeah, we're working on it. I don't know. <laughs> so this is Dana from uh, Hyperledger Basu. Um, yep. I want to echo Dan Middleton's last comment. I do think that at least security code of conduct should be required content. And I almost wonder if license, since we specify Apache 2, if you should also require license to have not just present, but specified conduct, uh, content. Uh, yeah, we, we do. And I think that's configurable because there is a check for the license. So. I think sometimes when we have compatible licenses, then yeah. those get uh, listed in a way that we couldn't necessarily have a single file that's shared across the projects, but otherwise the Apache yeah. file is already now, a, a standard file. So. If I'm not mistaken that Rye, if you're on, yeah, there you are, you're still here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, um, I'm, I'm you not did go saying through anything. You did security, did you? you? But you did security, didn't you? I, I did, uh, yeah, I kind of uh, sprayed security.md everywhere. Um, it's the same everywhere, and I got feedback on the wording not being totally awesome, and uh, I haven't done round two. Um, okay. Because I wanted to have the same totally not awesome file everywhere instead of getting it, uh, you know, diverged. Another thing that I do when I create these repos is I add the Apache 2 file from GitHub, I just click the, it's a patch two license and uh, add it yeah. to, the, to the repo. Um, but I have, I have noticed, <clears throat> so number one, nothing that we do is looking at those files to make sure that that file is the same. Um, and I've seen a couple times where uh, people will bring in code that tries to modify that. And it's always, you know, just like line endings or something like that. Right. And so yeah. I, I don't really care a lot about keeping that file and, you know, totally perfect, but I, we're not watching it either. So someone could come in there and replace the license with uh, GPL. And if someone, and if well, you, watching, you are, because happen. when, the, when you do the license scan that pops up, right? In fact, we found one just the sure. other day, <laughs> but that's not real time, right? No, it's, that's right. I mean, it'd be nice if the whole thing was real time. But. Sure. Um, then there's then there's the the other issue, which I think uh, was what Dano was getting at, um, which was the 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 difference between the the Bezu COC and the Hyperledger COC, yeah. and uh, I think that's you know that's another issue. I don't know Bezu. Or, sorry, Dano is that I'm all what for you're aligning it. At? I'm all for aligning it. I just want to do the change once, so yeah. we can get buy-in from all the maintainers once. And it would yep. be nicer if there was a single, this is the file you put in and this is what's covered with it. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, stuck in the mud about, we have to do our code of conduct. I'm fine with that, but I want a standard template that we go through once. So we don't have to go through it every time there's a minor change. We could do that right, right now. It's in, it's actually in the, in the, the, the wiki. It's one of the TSC documents. Uh, the one that Marno points at every morning uh, that we get together. But like the literal file that, what I've yeah, seen, a, um, I want oh, a file that we so put the in. File just a pointer to a wiki that page. we have in the fabric is just a, a thing that says our code of conduct is over here. Please, uh, you know, I don't know. But as far as words. a repo, I don't think a pointer to a wiki was really sufficient. I think it should be embedded in the history of it. Here is the statement of our code of conduct. Follow this. For people who randomly browse it, they're more likely to actually read that than to click on the link to a wiki. That's what I was wanting as an actual here's the boilerplate like you do with the Apache license tech, this you would need to put in your repo as part of it. So Dano, um, the code of conduct hasn't been changed in a long time and it's actually given to us by um, Linux Foundation Legal. So mm -hmm. if you did want to copy and paste it out of the wiki, um, you know, like have the link and then have the copy and paste, I think that should be okay because of the fact that, like I said, it doesn't, change often it's it's a linux foundation um thing and so it doesn't actually go through that very often it hasn't changed since i've been here yeah i don't think the lfcoc i've been here about five years and i don't think the lfcoc has changed the only thing that has changed uh was the more explicit uh wording 
around, uh, oh, it's not, it's not even in this document. It was uh, event COC being a specific thing, so. Yeah. But there's no like, you know, this is the file in text format, like do we get with the Apache license that says, you know, put this file in. I would just have to copy it and format it myself to my suiting. Uh, I, I, no, we I, could do a dot GitHub file. I yeah I, I hear I hear what you're getting at and I think that is a a perfect uh, a perfect thing to do is to have like one file and everyone agrees to it. And when you make a new repo, it shows up along with the other boilerplate files. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, guys, I think we don't need to go into more gory details now. It sounds like we have a pretty promising uh, path forward on this issue. I'd be happy to let uh, the group, the task force, figure out the last few details and then have a formal decision made next week, if possible. Is there anything, any reason not to proceed as such? So was there an action then to set up an example repo as a lab that has the decided? No, what point? Tracy was suggesting was would, that we fork the to do groups project and modify that to meet our needs. Um, I, I took sort of an action to explore that because I think you can just set the property for what you want to use as your config. <clears throat> yeah, so we probably want to run this through the project maintainers so that they're not blindsided by it and they'll yep. be more accepting I, of it. I, I, I could agree with that. Um, so if we've got that config file set up somewhere for them and everybody can see that it doesn't make the, the world burn down. I could also <laughs> run it against all of the project repos and come back with a report that says, here's what it found when I, you know, and then we can share that and have the, the broader discussion, I guess. Well, that would be super nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Very good. I'm glad. The kind of guy I am. <laughs> who's, who's at Chris Ferris's house right now? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Gary. <laughs> it must not be Chris. We haven't heard any dogs barking. There's no uh, dogs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So I just want to remind y'all that I'm taking notes and I'm putting that down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so committed. <laughs> All right. So that's the end of the agenda. We have a few minutes left. I'm happy to close early, obviously, but if there's anything else anybody wants to bring up before we close, so now is time to speak up. I don't think you're really happy to close early because you said this earlier and you didn't close. Yeah, well, but that's how it is. All right, with <laughs> that, then if all we have is Gary giving me a hard time, I'm going to close it now for sure. <laughs> I succeeded. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining. Then talk Thanks to you again next week. Thanks, Bye. Gary. Bye. Bye. Bye.